Hey everyone, Chris here from Maven Analytics with another five minute tip. Today we're gonna to be talking about one of the trickiest yet most important data types to understand in Excel, dates and times. So what I wanna to do today is demystify the one single key that you need to understand to work effectively with dates, the date value. So what we're gonna do is jump into Excel. I'm gonna show you exactly how date values work and how they can be used to do some really powerful things like time intelligence and extracting date components. I'll even show you a couple pro tips that most Excel experts don't know. Let's jump in, give it a shot. All right, let's go ahead and start talking about dates. As you can see here, I've got a pretty simple workbook set up where we're gonna plug in a date or a timestamp value. We'll take a look at what the underlying date value looks like We'll practice extracting some components from those dates and times, and then we'll share some really cool tips to extract either just the date or just the time from a timestamp value. But first things first, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We need to understand the key to how this all works, which is the date value. Now to understand date values, it's really helpful to picture a timeline that looks like this. Note that it starts on January 1st, 1900, and it extends to the present day and beyond. This is known as the 1900 date system. So Excel says, all right, if January 1st, 1900 is the start of time, let's assign that date a value of one, right? And then by similar logic, January 2nd, 1900 gets a value of two, January 3rd, value of three. So if we're looking at March 9th, 2022, that has a date value of 44,629. And the way to interpret that is that 44,629 days have passed since January 1st, 1900. And this sequence of values is what allows Excel to perform time intelligence types of calculations, like the difference between dates, month over month or year over year changes, things like that. So obviously we're just dealing with whole numbers here at this point, but we can go a level deeper. Let's zoom in on two of these dates, March 7th and March 8th. Let's stretch out the timeline and put March 7th on the left, March 8th on the right. If we wanted to perform any sort of date calculation based on times, like the number of minutes or hours between two events, for instance, we need more granular date values. So what you see are date values with decimals that look something like this. So check it out, at 12 p.m. noon on March 7th, we see a date value of 44,627.5 because it's halfway between March 7th and March 8th. 6 p.m. is three quarters of the way through the day, so the date value is 44,627.75, and this gets as granular as the second. So 7.39 p.m. and eight seconds has an associated date value of 44,627.81884. All right, so now that we know the basics, let's practice putting this to good use. Here in cell C2, this is where we wanna input some sort of date or timestamp value. There are a few ways to do it. You could type in a date in a format or syntax that Excel understands, like so. Note that I've formatted the cell as a date and time format. And if I wanted to confirm that Excel is treating that as a proper or valid date, there are a few ways I could do it. The first is to use Command-1, open up the number format, dialog box, head to the general category, and check it out. This shows me that there is an underlying date value, so Excel is recognizing that as a valid date. I could also use a value function, which I'll do here in cell C3, point to the date, and it gives me that same date value as a result. Now, if you're typing in dates, you have to be careful that you don't use a format that Excel doesn't understand, like this. Note that my format didn't change and my value function now returns an error. That's because my value here in C2 is not a date. It's a text string that happens to look like a date. And as a result, I can't use any of these great date or time functions to analyze this. So for this demo, I want to return current date or current time. A couple ways to do that. I could use the today function with no arguments, March 11th, 2022. Or if I want the current time as well, I could use the now function also with no arguments and check it out. Now that date value has a decimal component as well, 0.574, which makes sense because 146 is just over halfway through the day. 
And now that I have this date value, I can do all these things like extracting components or day parting or time parting very, very easily. For instance, I could use the hour function to extract just the hour. It's the 13th hour, 1 p.m. I could use the minute function to extract the minute. I could even use the second function to just give me the current second. And because now is a volatile function, every time I recalculate, it's going to update. Note that second value changing every single time. Same thing at the day level. I can pull out day of C2. It's the 11th day of the month. Weekday has one additional argument. I'm going to point to the date. The return type just allows me to specify what day of the week I should start on. Let's use Sunday through Saturday. So it's the sixth day of the week. Month of C2 will give me the third month, which is March. And of course, the year of C2 returns 2022. So in a matter of seconds, I've been able to pull out all of these different components of that date because I have that underlying date value. Now, last thing I want to show you here, which is really cool, is how to extract just the date from that timestamp or just the time. So because we know now that Excel processes dates based on this underlying value, it means we can manipulate that underlying value to do things like this. So if we just want the date from a timestamp, it means we only want the whole number component from that date value in C3. Great way to do that is to use the integer or INT function, point to the date. It's going to give me just the whole number and pull out the date, March 11th, 2022. And then a little bit trickier pulling out the time. But what we can do here is use the mod function, which returns the remainder when we divide a value by another. So let's divide the date by one, see what the remainder is. Boom, the remainder is 0.57596, which equates to a time of 149 and 23 seconds. So there you have it, quick recap of what date values are all about and how you can do some pretty quick and powerful things once you understand how they work. All right, that just about does it. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you'd like to see more content like this, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the Maven Analytics channel, and shoot me a comment if there's anything specific that you'd like to see in the future. Until then, happy learning, and I'll see you next time.